Thank you all for being here. Thank you for what you do. Uh, I want to say thanks to Vince and his board and his entire team. I'm so proud to see how the organization has grown over such a short period of time. I don't know what my life would be like without Vince's sense of humor. <laughs> sense of humor. <laughs> you know, this chapter that you all make up is the, lar the fastest growing and most active chapter in the National Farmers Union United. <laughs> Yeah. Which, which may be one reason why Roger is here uh, to join all of you. Where'd Roger go? Is he still here? There he is. Thank you very much for being here, Roger. Your leadership at the national level makes a tremendous impact on policymakers in Washington and brings voice to all of your chapters uh, all across the country. Uh, I want to say thanks also to Ed and Troy and Allah and your whole family here for hosting us uh, very generously and really with such warm hospitality. Uh, Chris Lee did a tremendous job in really talking about the value and benefit of this organization and the value and benefit of what that impact brings to policymakers at the county level, at the state level, and at the national level. Uh, I'm not going to, I was going to say a lot of the things that you said. I knew I should have gone first. Uh, so I, I won't, I won't um, harp on that point, but I do want to highlight uh, what a tremendous leader Chris is uh, for all of us on these very important issues, really serving as kind of the tip of the spear and being a voice for and amplifying your voices there in the state legislature. Uh, you know, I see now as a, a time of transition for us here in Hawaii but also in some ways across the country. Uh, there are some challenges that exist that many of us are well aware of, but with those challenges, it is our choice uh, to turn those challenges into opportunities. Uh, for us here in Hawaii, with HCNS closing on Maui, it literally is an end of an era transitioning it from the plantation era to a new era of opportunity for agriculture. And it is us having a seat at the table where we can have a say in shaping what this new era for agriculture agriculture looks like. And what better place than here in Hawaii where we can remind ourselves, be inspired by the power of those who have come before us, of our kupuna who have come generations before us, and who continue to teach us about the power that lies within our land. Mr. Speaker, under U.S. law, it is illegal for you or me or any American to provide any type of assistance to Al-Qaeda, ISIS, or other terrorist groups. If we broke this law, we'd be thrown in jail. Yet the U.S. government's been violating this law for years, directly and indirectly supporting allies and partners of groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS, with money, weapons, intelligence, and other support in their fight to overthrow the Syrian government. A recent New York Times article confirmed that rebel groups supported by the U.S., quote, have entered into battlefield alliances with the affiliate of al-Qaeda in Syria, formerly known as al-Nusra. The Wall Street Journal reports that rebel groups are, quote, doubling down on their alliance with al-Qaeda. This alliance has rendered the phrase moderate rebels meaningless. We must stop this madness. We must stop arming terrorists. I'm introducing the Stop Arming Terrorists Act today to prohibit taxpayer dollars from being used to support terrorists. Mr. Speaker, I yield back.